So let's start. Can you tell us how each of you got involved with this project? And I'll start with you, Jim. I couldn't get a job for the life of me, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And I remember <laughs> getting sent an email with the script in, and I looked at it and I went, and I ignored it because I thought there's no point even doing it. They wanted me to self tape, and I was like, nope, no point, not going to get it anyway, being all like bratty and whatever. And then, um, and then they kept coming back to me going, Jamie, where's this self tape? Where is it? I was like, oh, I haven't done it yet. And they said, right, we're going to get you in with the cast and director in London. I went and met with her and did the tape with her. And then I tested with Chloe the week afterwards. And then that was it. Fantastic. Chloe? Beat that. <laughs> um, I, I heard about the project from my, my, my mom and my brother when they got the script and they read it first and they sent it to me and they were like, look, this is a really cool project. Um, it's based off of a beloved novel. Um, RJ Cutler, who we've been trying to work with for a while, is who we'd probably like to get as the director. And, and so I, I signed on to it and um, I, I, well, I read the script and then I read the book simultaneously. And I kind of fell in love with who Mia was in the novel, and it, it made me really want to infiltrate everything that she is in the novel into the real story that we're going to be portraying on screen. And then when I met with RJ, we kind of fell in love with each other artistically, and um, we had all the same notes, uh, and we decided that this would be the perfect project for us to do together, and we both simultaneously signed on to the project together, and uh, that was it. And then we went on to cast him, and that worked out really well and it all just kind of fell into place, you know? Yeah. Now can you tell us a little bit about the characters you play? I play Adam who uh, who's in a who's in a, in high school kind of towards the beginning and I think he leaves high he's school a senior. as a girl. He's a senior. Um, and he's in a band and um, and as he's walking down the corridor one day he hears this music coming from the music room and he goes and checks it out and he sees Mia playing playing the uh, the cello and he's kind of mesmerized by it and really interested in her after that invites her out on a date they kind of go out together and then and then that's basically it in a nutshell and they kind of spend a good 18 months together before the accident happens yeah um what was his, his your question? character yeah Can you tell us about her? um mia is a, a girl who lives a pretty charmed life you know she's I think she's about 16 years old when you when you meet her, or I think she's like 15 years old and she ends around 17 or something like that altogether. Um, and, you know, she lives a pretty charmed life. She's been a, a cellist since she was about eight years old. And she, she kind of keeps herself in this little bubble, you know, this little classical bubble. And um, she doesn't really want to derail her life with a boyfriend or anything else. And then just by happenstance, you know, Adam kind of pushes his way into her life and she ends up, you know, kind of giving up what she uh, always was kind of holding back is that she kind of fell in love with him and then they spend these 18 months together and it's beautiful and then she's faced with this huge tragedy and, you know, everything that means so much to her, her life, her family, her mom, her dad, her little brother, everything is gone and, and she's kind of faced with the question, should she stay or should she go? Now music obviously plays a big role in this film too. Um, I, Adam, I, or I, I think that there was some background in music for you. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of knew the rock genre. Mm -hmm. Did you bring any of that to your character? Yeah, I, I mean, I've always been interested in bands. I've always followed bands and various other types of music. And I played the guitar since I was about 12. So, um, you know, very basically, I just kind of did it by myself when I felt like it as opposed to having lessons. and. And um, yeah, and then before the movie, I, I just had a bunch of lessons with a guy back home called Simon Tong, who's played with a bunch of really cool bands. And um, and then came to Vancouver and did a bunch of band practice as well. So it was it was really fun for me to do that. And especially with all the boys in the band, we kind of towards the end, you know, felt really good playing up there together. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. It was good. And how about you? Did you have any experience with classical music before? Um, I hadn't had any experience playing it or actually being a part of classical music, but I always had a kind of epiphany for it, and I always kind of fell in love with it from a really young age. I think I was about 10 or 11 years old when I started really listening to classical music, shockingly. Um, and then, uh, you know, kind of trying to learn the, the, the cello and kind of, you know, spending seven months with it prior to filming. I really seem to get an appreciation even more than I had for classical music and for classical, um, cl 
classical artists. You know, it, it's such an intricate thing to do and, and to create all those sounds and these beautiful kind of, I don't know, these this, this symphony, you know what I mean? Which when you watch, it's kind of mesmerizing in general, but when you're a part of it is, is even more special. So I think, um, I don't know, the, the cello gave me a, a deeper appreci appreciation for classical music than I had. Great, and you spoke about working with RJ. Um, can you expand a little bit about on that? Was that a collaborative set for everyone? It seems like mm -hmm. it was a very, very relatable cast, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they all seem to come off very well on screen. And I'm sure that you know. Can you talk also about working with uh, Murray and Joshua? Yeah. Um, well, for me, I think that RJ was an incredibly collaborative director. You know, and also Gail. Gail. I think between Gail and RJ, it was a really collaborative process. I mean. You know, Gail is the author of the novel, and she, she right from the get-go, wanted to kind of mesh my ideas of Mia and her ideas of Mia together to kind of create this script and create the Mia you see on screen. And for me, I fell in love with the Mia in the book, so I really wanted to do that justice and be honest and true to it and not lie, you know what I mean, and not fabricate this cinematic, cinematic experience that wasn't true. Um, and RJ, you know, comes from a documentarian background. Mm -hmm. And he really helped us to keep it very grounded. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but him coming from that background just kind of, you know, he wanted to make sure that the story was as real and as authentic as possible. And that, and as that, you know, as actors, I, I guess that only helps us out, you know. Yeah, and then Mire and Josh were oh, really cool people. So nice. So fun. Liana, Mire, Josh, Jacob, my little, little Jacob, brother. Yeah. Everyone was was really awesome on this movie, and we all really got along. And there wasn't any moment where we were like, oh, we don't yeah, need to go to, to set and go to work with them. Yeah, it was really, they're a really nice bunch of people. Really collaborative group. It looked really great. So one last question. This is a, this story has a pretty heavy question for people that are young and mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a really good question. So what do you hope that people will take away from this, or what do you think the message is from this film or this story? I think there's many messages. I think one of the main messages is the fact that you should never take a day for granted. You know what I mean? You should you should live every day like, you, you know, letting everyone know around you that you love them and that you care for them and that they're a huge part of your life because, you know, it just reminds everyone that you never know it's going to be your last day. You never know when you're going to round a corner and this is waiting for you. Yeah. So... Yeah, and I, I also think it's a it's a good story about following you know your your ambition and your and your dreams no matter you know no matter what kind of obstacles get in your way you know anything is kind of possible. Great, well you guys did a great job.